What's up everybody, James here with Squatch Bikes and today we're gonna go over one of our most popular products, it's Kushcore. Kushcore is pretty amazing stuff. We're gonna have a little bit of fun with it today. These two knuckleheads back here are going to race to do an installation. Welcome to Squatch Bikes. So for some of the things that I like, I love the fact that it levels out my vision. So when I'm coming down a very chundry trail, rather than seeing this, it kind of smooths it out. It's also adding a little bit of suspension and a little bit of protection for my rim. I really don't have a negative. People ask me all the time about the weight of it. I don't feel it. I, I don't feel it at all. With that being said, I'm gonna get these two racing because I really wanna see who wins. And then I'm gonna hand it over to Pat and Pat is gonna actually take you through step-by-step step for the installation of it. Are you guys ready? I'm ready to go. Here you Roll with it. You wanna start because we only have one of these and you're gonna need a head start anyway. Damn! Oh, you're not gonna give me the tool back? No. <laughs> Pat, I thought you were gonna stop and tell us what you like and don't like. I love the control that it gives the tire. So it calms the tire down, it slows the rebound. It really allows the bike to track way straighter than just a straight up tire. So, plus the added flat protection, cornering support, all that, and the benefit of lower tire pressure for even what aggressive you, what, riding. What are you doing? Where's the doing? push core? It's know. right there. Oh. Giant wall. Where's what the push core? He's, he's gonna destroy you. Not yet. Um, I also love the fact that someone who just, I don't like noises on bikes. I like no chain slap, no cable rattle. It really quiets the whole bike. Where's the bell? Give me the bell. Valve. Give me the valve. I got my valve, you can get yours. Where's the box? Right in front of you. We spent an hour setting this up. He's trying to sabotage you, I think. He, I told him sabotage was on the table, so that's fine. But it looks like he's going to try and do it with half the tire on. That's the oh, what was that about Will's floor being clean? <laughs> oh, Will, you sabotaged yourself. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He's already got the crush core out. Oh, it's going on the rim. So, including in my long line of benefits of Cush core, the rim protection is a huge part of it. So, we build super durable rims here all the time, but even aluminum rims that are strong are dent prone, and the Cush core just saves them from so much. Trying to cut corners and it's just making it worse. This is not looking good for you, dude. <laughs> Why did you leave half the tire on? Ah, oh, Will. Ah, oh, Will. Borrow your trash can while you're struggling there. Dude, we almost need to give him a handicap. <laughs> Can we give me a handicap? Here, no tire lever. Oh, we got blood. Two is but a scratch. I'm already one side down, Will. He's trying. He's trying. I'm looking for a rag. Are you gonna use? Will got three fingers at least bleeding right now. <laughs> and oh, attacking me with sealant. Oh, Will! I don't have to clean this oh up. My God, what are you doing? There's more sealant over there. I'll clean it. <laughs> Come on, Will. It's slippery. Let me see it real quick. Yeah, let him see. Let, let the air out. I'm done. Just the one that... Oh, I'm just gonna steal. <laughs> well, that was a bit of a debacle. So let's go over how to actually do it without getting bloody hands. So we're gonna go over disassembly first and then how to install it the, the way that we do it here at Squatch. So um, it's always easiest just to remove the valve core. Go ahead and pull that out. Take in off the valve core. Uh, next step uh, is just to break the tire bead from the rim. And this seems like it's difficult with the cush core inside, but if you just roll, you put your fingers up against the tire bead just like this, and you roll the wheel away from you, that tire bead will break almost every time. You continue that all the way around. It is very difficult to get the tire bead out if you only have a little part of it um, broken away from the rim. So you do the whole way around on both sides. 
you hear all that pop the first time, and you just kind of peel it the rest of the way around the rim. Next step is gonna be to pick either side of the tire. You pull that tire bead back that you've already broken, and you just slide your tire lever underneath. You should be able to see it just like this. Just like that. Next thing we wanna do is take the whole tire and push core assembly and push it off the rim. I try and make sure that I do this on the other side, opposite of the disc brake, so we don't get the sealant on top of the rotor. Take it, get your thumbs behind the tire like so, and push it directly off. Usually the cush core will pop out first, making it pretty easy just to get that second half of the tire off. It should all come off as one unit. It's really important to remember to put in the cush core valve. It has holes on the top and the side. If you forget, you can only put air in and you can't get it back out. So don't forget that. Make sure you get that cush core approved three hole valve in there. So first step in assembly of the cush core system is to make sure you stretch this cush core circle pretty good. You'll see here me doing it while Will struggles in the background. And after you've done that, it's much easier to stretch the cush core up over the rim. Um, they recommend to pull up towards you with something holding the rim down. I find it's much easier to start with the uh, cush core on top of the rim and use gravity as, to your advantage to push down. And then all you have to do is just snap it up over top, just like that. At this point, you take your tire, make sure that you're putting it on straight because it does take a bit longer to take on and off than a standard tire. So going straight, I take my valve and I line it up with the logo on the tire and you just gently, shouldn't take much force at all, except some like downhill casing tires and really tall rims. Uh, those combos can get kind of tight, but you're gonna take that tire, pull it up over the cush core like that. Once you've done that, I find it's really helpful to have a tall trash can just something to push on. You don't need much force, but it just gives you a platform to work on and it doesn't contact the hub. So I make sure that I start with the valve closest to me. This ensures that I get the logo lined up every time. And the whole goal here is to push the tire bead underneath the cush core in between the rim bead and the cush core foam itself. It's very helpful to take the tire bead, push forward towards the spokes and then drag it backwards. As you do, you'll grab the cush core at the same time and kind of peel it away from the rim. At this point, your goal is to just push the tire bead underneath and in between as far as you can until things start to get tight. I find it's very helpful to work in opposition. So left hand around the left side of the rim and right hand around the right. So now we get to a point, just like any tire, where it gets tight the last eight or nine inches to put on. So a helpful trick is to not lose your tire lever. Found it. Take the tire lever and turn the hook away from the rim tape. So the hook would be going up towards the top of the tire. This is gonna help you not cut or puncture the rim tape uh, that's inside, because that's a big bummer. You put it on, you air it up, it leaks air. You gotta take it all back off again. So you hold tension on the part of the tire that's still not snapped over the rim. And you take that tire lever and gently push the tire bead underneath the cush core. If you hold tension on the space that's not snapped over yet, it will stay underneath, kind of keeping it pulled into the center channel of the rim. Once you've done that, you should be able to almost always start snapping it up over by hand. And the goal is to do this without any tools to snap that last tire bead up and over. That's how we puncture rim tape. We wipe off the outside and then do the exact same thing on the second side. The only difference on side two is I like to finish at the valve. It takes up just that last little bit of space and it makes it just a little bit easier to get that last bit of tire over. So I'm gonna repeat, pull the tire forward towards the spokes, pull it back down, and then start to stuff that tire bead all the way around the rim. I go both ways, all the way till the top where it gets tight. Hold that open section of tire bead still and start to stuff the tire bead underneath the rim. and then finish by pushing up and over. And you can see that time, you didn't have to use a tire lever on either side. This is a standard casing tire on an aluminum rim, so it's a pretty easy tire to put on. There are some where you will have to snap up and over with the tire lever the last little bit. A good helpful tip to preserve your rim tape is to never go past 90 degrees with the rim. If you go up and over, that's when you start to puncture. Last two steps, inflate with your compressor, your pump, snap the beads on and then put in your sealant. All right, using an injector, is the, safe, is the cleanest way to do this without getting sealant exploded everywhere. It's almost impossible to do this with sealant already in the tire, so you're gonna have to push through the valve. In this case, obviously my valve core is out. I just have an open tubeless valve. I face the tire towards the bottom, 
and I push in my sealant. Helpful tip, if you rotate the valve back to the top and you pull the injector off, it won't spurt fluid everywhere. Once we've got that off, all we have to do is reinstall our valve core, inflate, and then it's time to go ride. That's Kush core. it's easy. If you've done it a couple hundred times, the first few times that you do it, you're just gonna struggle. It's a little hard, but if you follow those steps, it's much easier. So we're at the bottom of buckwheat. It's steep. It's really wet right now because it rained last night just to showcase some of the stuff that goes on with the tire with Kush core installed. So I dropped the tires to like 10 PSI and all 200 pounds of my fat butt, it'll still support it. I shouldn't burp, the rim will be fine. And uh, I'm gonna try and climb this slippery, slimy bit of rocks here. Benefits in descending, the list is very long. So depends kind of how you are as a rider and what part of it you really like best. I love the composure, the quietness, and the calmness of the tire's rebound. So we're gonna show you here on this big pile of rocks how the tire conforms to the ground. Whether you're a very gentle cornerer or a very aggressive cornerer, there are benefits to you. If you're gentle, you drop the pressure, you get nothing but traction. John, you gotta put in that clip. Like the very first day we went out filming with our new cameras, we got that one golden shot. Just laying into a corner as hard as you can and it does nothing but snap you out, keep the tire on the rim, and give you all that support that you really need. So we've gone over how to put it in and what it does for you on the trail. So I'm gonna go smash mine through as many rocks as I can on Bennett right now and see if these brand new wheels will hold up. And if you're in the Brevard area, come ride with us. Yeah. He, he teaches me how to work on stuff. Are you, and are I you teach him to how to ride. Planes? Yeah. Ooh. I think it's more so you're ready to give them up. Yeah, honestly, straight up, I'm ready to get rid of them. <laughs> Our wrists are dead from that still. So you have, can we not fix the fork first so he gets to no, 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 no. You gotta ride it with the that fork. Kids these days All are right. too spoiled. They can't ride a broken fork. Then we fork. can't take it to Canuga. At least needs a new fork to take yeah, it to Yeah, a new Canuga. fork before. It's not gonna fall I'll apart. show you up either way, but. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I'll, I'll do it with both. Okay, so new fork and therein fork. lies the next challenge is we're doing uh, retro bike time trials. I've got a lot more time riding V-brakes than you do, boy. I don't use brakes, so... <laughs> <laughs> okay. John and I were filming something, I forget what it was, but I'm sitting there and I'm like, we have another retro bike. Can we fix the ProFlex? Yes, we're gonna fix the ProFlex. Cool. We're gonna fix the animal, yeah. and I think it should be a race. All right, fair enough. We'll find you for it. I'll get on fixing the animal. He needs to still ride it though. He needs the full experience. All right, well, where am I riding it? Steep side Cedar Rock. Steep side of Cedar Rock? I did Steep Cedar side Rock. Cedar Rock. That's equally difficult on a bike like that, but in a little bit of a different way. All right, fine. I'm happy to pass the red torch of turd off to you, and then I will fix the other turd. Well, I'm doing nothing. Man, there was a lot. Of... Oh, we can't <laughs> even keep a trash can standing up. 